All right. We're welcoming back a sort of an old friend to the show, I guess, although sometimes he throws me off the show. Jesse Lee Peterson is joining us. He is host of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. He's host of The Fallen State, which I visited the studio when I was in Los Angeles. Uh, and Jesse, are you are you a are you a pastor as well? Do I recall that correctly? Are you a Christian pastor? I am. Yes. You are. And what what denomination? Non-denominational Christian. OK. And I remember that your studio in L.A., people may find this interesting. Is it also some kind of Christian counseling center? Do I remember that correctly? Where you counsel young men? Yeah, but. Uh, not in the studio. We have I have my offices upstairs, and so we we counsel in in house and by Skype or telephone or by phone, whichever is easy for the folks. That's fascinating. And so now you're you're not like a therapist, right? You're not a social worker or a psychologist or anything like that. No, just a counselor. Okay, and, and that that's uh, an un, in California. That's an unregulated credential, right? Anybody can use that term. Well, you have to you have to be a, a minister or a pastor or something like that. And you can do counseling under the head of, of your ministry. Wow. And that insurance doesn't cover that, right? It does. It does. In California, oh, yeah. you can go to a counselor who's just a minister and it's considered a medical visit. One hundred percent. As a matter of fact, it's better that you come to me than the people with the degrees. Well, that's an opinion. That's an opinion. But I'm concerned with the notice, legal piece. If you know. And by the way, we are friends, David, even though I had to throw you off one day. We still friends. Sometimes okay. I throw my friends off. Okay. Fair. But, uh, but, uh, it's better that you come to me than a person with a degree, because if you notice the educated people are dumb, they have no sense. No I've not noticed sense. that. I've not noticed and, that. And they end up giving the people after they run after the, just before the people run out of money, mm. they give them medication because the therapist uh, the trained therapists and counselors, psychologists and psychiatrists have no common sense. They well, but a lot of the people you just mentioned, a issues. lot of the people you just mentioned can't even prescribe medication. So psychologists don't prescribe, neither do social workers. So what you're saying, you know, you know, it's not true, right? Well, what I'm saying is that people with degrees are dummies. And they have no common sense. They're just okay. repeating what someone told them. I gotcha. All right. Now, now I understand because the first thing you said is literally impossible because they can't prescribe. But well, I'm listen, glad Jesse, you hear that. You're glad to hear that. Good. And you can't prescribe. You're not prescribing anything, I'm, I'm guessing. No, no, no. 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 OK, good. Yeah. Um, so listen, Jesse, we're on the precipice here of an election. And the reason I wanted to talk to you is to figure out on because you're such a master of policy, you know, economics and trade and all of these things. I wanted to figure out where you are on Trump and policy. So let just to begin with, I mean, you, you approve of the job the president is doing, right? He's done an amazing job thus far, in spite of the children of the lie. Yeah. And the children of the lie, the liberal media, the Democratic Party, the never Trumpers, the mm. right or Republicans, the black race hustlers and the radical homosexuals. They have been against him but in sp and our enemies overseas as well. Mm. But in spite of that, he's done an amazing job. So uh, four more years of the great white hope. Yeah. And when you talk about the job that Trump has done, just to pick something to really dig into and make this, um, you know, I want to take the interview seriously and, you know, hopefully it won't devolve the way some of the prior interviews have. Let's take <laughs> economics and taxation, for example. Do you like the Trump tax plan? And if so, what do you like about it? Well, that's why I like the fact that he is cut back on taxes. He's giving more money to the workers rather than taking it. I like the fact that he um, uh, uh, has made it easier for small businesses to get going, even though we have a Chinese virus situation right now. So the economy uh, has stopped a little bit, but it's starting to come back. And due what, to the tax what, cuts what and regulations, but let's pick something. Let's, let's possible. pick one thing. What has Trump done to make it easier for businesses to get going by cutting back on so many rules and regulations that the Democrat had established? Like what? What's an example of such a such a, a rule? I don't have anything in mind right now. Yeah. But a lot of the rules and regulations that was preventing uh, 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 small businesses from starting. Yeah. Have been taken away by the great white hope. What would be. But so give me. Just I don't I know that there's dozens and dozens, but what's one such rule that was taken away that now makes it easier to start a business? Nothing come to mind right now. 
It, is there anything that you can remember even seeing at any time? Nothing come to mind. At Nothing. This time. Wow. No. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So let's stick with economics just for a moment. What do you think the top marginal tax rate should be for for top earners? Good question, man. I don't know. I haven't thought about it at this point. Is it too high or too low currently? So we know. I'm sorry. What did you say? Your phone went off for a minute. What did you say? I said, do you think the current top marginal tax rate is too high or too low? I'm not sure at this time, David. You're not sure. So no. how do you know that Trump's tax plan is good if you don't even know what tax rates are and how he changed them? Well, because I have not been focusing on that lately. I have more important things to think about and okay. do. That has not been one of my primary focus at this point. All right. Well, let's take a different topic then. Uh, Donald Trump made a huge deal during the campaign in 2016 and now about trade, trade with China, trade with Mexico and Canada. Do you believe that Donald Trump has fulfilled his campaign promises on trade or do you believe he has fallen short? He has not uh, fallen short, but he has not completed them at this time. That's why we have to. One of the reasons, but not the only that we have to do four more years. Yeah. So he can finalize the trade deals that he is working on. What would you like to and see also, him do on trade that he's not yet done to make sure that America is being treated fairly in trade deals and that we're not giving away or being used as we have been in the past? in those ways. Interesting. So Donald Trump yesterday at his rally said that he fixed China, that now China has to treat us fairly because he fixed it. And he says that he fixed Canada and Mexico with USMCA. So they're now treating us fairly. So who's left that's not treating us fairly on trade? Did he mention that yesterday? I didn't hear that at all. It was either yesterday or I mean, Maybe the rallies he, are blending together. Maybe it was the day he, before. Did he say who who was left that he had to deal with? No, I'm asking you, who do you think is no still idea. treating you us? You need unfair? to call the White House sportsman, yeah. sports person, and they can answer those questions for you. I have no idea. Well, but I guess in, what I'm, I'm trying in, to understand, Jesse, I'm not is in government. So you're asking me the wrong questions. Right. But so you you asserted that you like a lot of what Trump accomplished on trade, right, but, but believe that. But hold on, ask, Jesse. Hold on, Jesse, though. No, hold on, Jesse. Hold on. Hold asking on. about David. You have to call the White House. You're going to have plenty of time to answer. Let me just get the question out. You asserted that you like some of what he did on trade, but you want to see him do more. I'm saying what more should he do? I have no idea, David. You don't but know. He knows. So you should call them and ask them. You're asking me the wrong question. Oh, that's that's interesting because it sounds like you don't really know what's going on. Not just totally. No, no. Not okay. That area. And I'm not concerned about that either. I'm gl well, but you mentioned it as something you liked. So it must concern right, you I to like some degree. I like what the president is doing and has done as far as bringing jobs back, as far as some of the trade deals he's done. But for more information, you should contact them. But you don't think you should be an You're informed your voter? Time. I just told you, you should contact them. Don't you understand? Are you, it's hard to understand. No, it's cr coming. It's actually well, coming through clearer than ever. On. If you want to continue, you need to move on because you're asking the wrong person. So you're a very strong advocate of the president and you very powerfully, you powerfully say on your program, people should vote for him. But you seem unable to articulate what he's actually done. About those things you just asked, I have no idea. I'm not Fair. even concerned. Okay. How would you tackle climate change, Jesse? No such thing. Okay. And, and, and elaborate on that. It's a made up lie by the liberal Democrats in order to get more money and power and control the people. Climate mm. change is fake. You know, in some countries, uh, climate change is much less politicized. In other words, you might have scientists who are conservative and scientists who are liberal and they all agree about it. Why do you think in other countries, even the conservative scientists accept the science on climate? I have no idea. But in America, climate change is fake in them. In America, so maybe in those maybe in those. Uh, I don't know for sure, but yeah. maybe in those other countries, they are controlling the people because the people are weak minded and they allow themselves to be controlled by lies. Interesting. And maybe. and but and that's happening. That's happening in other countries. Uh, well, maybe I don't know for sure what's going on in other countries, but yeah. in my country is climate change is fake. 
are you um you're you're, of course, in coastal California, which is a place that if the sea level continues to rise, could have flooding problems. We've also seen a number of prominent conservatives abandon California for more uh, politically conservative parts of the country. Is that something you're thinking about? About abandoning California? Yeah, because it's so liberal. Not at this time. It, I mean, at one time for the first time in all my, I've been here since 1968. Yeah. It did cross my mind, but I'm not ready to pack up and run at this time. I believe that America, uh, that California will come back to become a conservative state because the Democrats have done a good job in screwing it up mm. when it comes to illegal aliens, homelessness, not a lockdown from the so-called Chinese virus, mm. the fires, the high taxes. Uh, and even with real, all of that, Jesse, you still prefer it to other conservative parts of the country after decades. That's interesting. I, I, I because I love California. I, right. I like the the well, it used to be beauty at, beautiful at one time. Yep. I like the opportunities in California and just an amazing state. We just need to get the Democrats out and replace it with conservative Republicans. Right. And you think you'll like it even more if Republicans take over California? If they are conservatives and not rhinos, I believe that we can put it back to a normal state of being prior to the Democrats completely taking over. What's something really specific in terms of the law that you'd like to see California do differently? It could be anything. It could be on, you know, guns. It could be on economic policy. Like, what would you like to see changed in California from a legal standpoint? Well, number one, I would like to see the uh, borders closed, shut down completely so the illegals cannot come in. I would like to see laws that says we will not and cannot and shall not pay for so-called health care for illegal aliens or anyone who is unwilling to work for themselves. Mm -hmm. I would love to see lower taxes for uh, uh, home buyers, land buyers, and people like that. Um, the restriction as far as the Second Amendment, right. they need to take their hands off of a Second Amendment. We have the right to buy bullets, wow. to own whatever gun we want, and has as many as we want. I would tell you some of those rules. Um, I uh, we're going to go to a break on the podcast, but my full conversation with with Jesse Lee Peterson will, of course, be published to our YouTube channel in full. No edits, Jesse. You know, we never edit anything you say. Listen, you mentioned you want to shut down the border. I'm curious. Um, a lot of Americans in California, Arizona, Texas, they go to Mexico for medical care because they can't afford it here in the United States. Do you want to shut that down as well? Do you want to stop Americans from going to Mexico for medical care? I don't I, No, I don't want to stop them from going. They can go anywhere they want to for okay. it. But I don't want us to have to pay for illegal alien health care in our country. And we should, I mean, in our state or in our country, period. Ah, okay. But we definitely should not be a sanctuary state or city. I would definitely change that. But you could be free. You are American. You can go wherever you want to get health care. That's up to you. Should Americans be more free than citizens of other countries? America should be, we are the light of the world mm -hmm. and we absolutely should be free. It's up to the other folks in their country to determine how much freedom they want. But if other countries determine that their citizens should be as free as Americans should be, you have no problem with that, right? If that's what they want, they can do whatever they want in their country. I'm only concerned about my country. Um, speaking of, of, uh, of our country, Jesse, um, when we watch your program and we hear these impassioned critiques of the things that are going wrong in the United States that you issue, um, one can't help but wonder what country has it right when you look around the world, Jesse, because you have so many, you know, criticisms of the United States. What country do you see that is getting it right on certain issues that you think we should emulate? We shouldn't emulate any of those countries. They are to emulate us. OK, because we are the best and the greatest country on this side of heaven. Yeah, we are the example of what other countries should become. But let even me though, see if I can rephrase though, it. Okay. Even though the Democrats have screwed it up a lot, the president is making it great again. Right. But we are the example for the rest of the world. Okay. So let me see if I can frame it in a different way. You point to a lot of things that you say Democrats have done very poorly. And you've said that this includes in California, but also around the country. 
What examples would you point to to say to the Democrats, here's how you should do it? Is there a state that's doing it right? Is there a country that isn't they're not I'm not saying a country's better than us, but for example, like is Saudi Arabia getting it right on capital punishment in your mind or is North Korea getting it right when it comes to how to control the media? Do you see anything you like there? The first thing that comes to mind that the Democrats has clearly do done to our country is to divide the races in order to uh, uh, conquer, divide mm. and conquer. And that is they have lied and said that there is such thing as police brutality, racism, white supremacists. OK. Uh, 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 all this stupid ism that they come up with. Isms. Those are lies. And the ism doesn't exist in our country, but they have managed to use those words in order to divide and conquer. Beautiful. I would love to get rid of those words and let the people know that there's no ism. It's either right or wrong, good or evil. You're either on the side of evil or you're on the side of good. And so that we can become one nation right. under God again, I would unite the country in that way. The first thing I would do. I love it. So when you say you want to get rid of those words, yes. would you ban the words? Would you make them? Would you outlaw the teaching of those words in school? Like schools can't use the word racism. How do you do that? I definitely wouldn't ban the word. Did you say I'm sorry? You said you would, you would you would or you would not, not. You would or you I would, would not. not ban. the okay. word. You can't ban the word. Got it. But I would not allow the schools to teach that to the children and brainwash them. Got it. In order to do what we see that they have done to the young folks already. Got it. So school curriculum could not include the word racism. That's right, because it doesn't exist. Right. It's a, it's a brainwashing technique to use to divide. We are uh, Americans. We are America. We are one nation under God. Yeah. And those words tend to divide us. Would you ban? And so you don't want any isms taught in school? No racism, no sexism, no homophobism, no Allah Abba ism, no white supremacism, and no anti Semitism. No ism. Is that either right or wrong, good or evil? Now, I'm sure you also then would would say that when Republicans use the isms socialism and communism, that's also divisive, right? And wrong. No, because there is socialism. Look at the Democratic Party. Oh. Look at the mindset of most black people. They are socialists in their mind in that they rely on the government to do for them and tell them when and where and how rather than doing for themselves. As a matter of fact, that's what the Democrats want to do by way of the government is to control the people by giving them things and thinking for them and providing rather than providing the folks providing for themselves. Who is a so, prominent Democrat so who's a socialist? Communism exists. Who, who is a prominent Democrat that's a communist? Wow, that's a good one. Um, you know, those four radical women that uh, who are those stupid women? The one from New York and Detroit. What? What? Yeah, the squad. Those mm -hmm. are perfect example of communism. I can't think of the name. It's so stupid. Sure. Um, so they and, or, and um, uh, Cortez, the Cortez, I believe, from New York. Mm -hmm. That's a nutcase. I don't even understand why anyone would even listen to her. Right. Let's more vote for her. But you have the other one out of. What? Yeah. Ilhan Omar mm -hmm. and another. One. And what uh, what Talib, communist what oh, yeah, what communist policy have they advocated for? They want to take care of the people. They want to take they care want of the people. They want to think for the people. They want to give free health care, free everything for the folks. Not all are they evil. It's pure communism. Jesse, do you know what communism is? Yes. What is it? The people, uh, when someone else wants to control you, it's about controlling other people. Communism is controlling other people. That's interesting. Yes. That's interesting. Um, okay. Uh, you, you've really said a lot here and, and, you know, I'm doing the best I can to, to, to sort of keep up with all of it. Tell me when you look at, uh, Donald Trump, you've, you've told us all of the things that you think he's done great, except then you said you don't really care about those things like economics and trade and all of that stuff. I care about them, but that's not my thing. I don't pay a lot of attention to that. Right. So here's my question. Are you able to identify anything you don't like that Donald Trump has done? 
I don't know how much I agree with him on letting the inmates out of the prisons. Mm. Uh, uh, which I'm inmates sure are which inmates are those? So, which inmates I'm are sorry? those? Which inmates are those? You know how they let a lot of the uh, uh, prisons out by saying that they're there because they sold pot or their crime wasn't bad enough to keep them in prison. Some kind of dumb stuff like that. You don't I like don't that. know how much I support that because I haven't had time to really look into that. I just feel that if you do the crime, you should do the time, and it doesn't matter what color you are. Right. I'm not in total support of that. And did you— And, um, yeah. and one other, sure. one other that might, might make you feel good on the inside. Um, I don't like the fact that when he—right now, there's a position open on the U.S. Supreme Court. Yes. I don't like the fact that he is— uh, nominated a woman just because it's a woman really? in America, it should be the best qualified person and not even say, Hey, I'm gonna put a woman there, or right. I'm gonna put a man there, I'm gonna put a black there, I'm gonna put a homosexual there, or anything like that. But I'm gonna look and find the best person that's qualified, right? And that's the person I'm gonna put in that position. That is the American way. So it's just, it's sort of identity politics that Trump is playing yeah. in a sense on this part. I don't like that. No, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Certainly well, uh, right yeah. into the hands of the Democrats when you do that. And you and I know that the Democratic Party is an evil party. It has no Chris uh, godly values at all. You know what's weird about that, Jesse? He, I, as a, you're a man of faith, right? And you're a Christian uh, counselor, and you know all of this stuff. We it, also have an entrepreneur academy where we're teaching young men how to start their own businesses, or if they already started, we help them enhance the business. I started a credit union where we loan them the money, and they pay yeah. it back with small interest. We, uh, we've been around for thirty years now. Bond. The Brotherhood's organization of a new destiny. Right. And but we my question is um, the family by rebuilding a man because most males today are beta males. Right. Real men. So we're showing them how to overcome being a beta male. OK, so I was trying to keep this from being a cartoonish farce, but but it's it's not clear that that's possible. But to get back to the, the sort of um, religious question that you brought up. When I look at Donald Trump and Joe Biden, this is po nope. This is not looking at politics. This is just looking at religion. Like if I were a voter who cared about religion, I look at Biden. He's been a devout Catholic his entire life. He's gone to church since he was a kid. He knows scripture. He understands Catholic teachings. And then I look at Trump and Trump never went to church until he decided to run for president never read a Bible, doesn't even know how to hold the Bible. If you ask me which is the religious president, who's the Christian, uh, the candidate, not president, isn't it obviously Joe Biden? No, it's not. Joe Biden. I mean, Satan could quote the scripture for you. Uh, Satan could go to a Catholic church. OK, Satan can hold up the Bible and there is no particular way of holding the Bible. That's a dumb idea. Wow. You can Darn, hold okay. the Bible wherever you want to hold the Bible. OK. Hold it, uh, and that's so dumb. I can't even believe that people even mention that. Wow. But Joe Biden is a very weak beta male. And it just because he went to a Catholic. Look at the Pope. The Which Pope, Pope is ten. The Pope wear a beautiful gown. Oh, the Pope. He, he, oh, oh, oh. he goes out and pretend he want to greet the people. But if you touch his hand, he's going to slap it away. Mm. And he knows the Bible. He he went to Catholic school and Catholic church. Right. Just like just because you go to church or read the Bible doesn't make you be. It doesn't mean that you are a Christian. Oh, are Trump you? A, that's interesting. Christianity better than uh, Joe Biden could ever think of what a Christian is. Joe Biden doesn't even know he's in America right now. Which uh, which Christian value do you think Donald Trump most strongly embodies? Perfect love for who? All people. Wow. Wow. That's incredible, Jesse. Amazing. That's amazing. Are you kind of I'm getting the sense that you're not really that into Catholicism. Is that is that accurate? No, I'm not. You're, I, okay. I, know, I know a bit more about it now than I did while growing up because it, uh, that wasn't in my area where I grew up. Yeah, but I'm learning that it's a waste of time and that the Pope is tick. Sorry, the Pope. What was that word? The Pope is what? Ticked. He's upset. Oh, he's, he's ticked. A beta. Okay. He's a beta. Mm. Um, 
just to kind of circle back around, can you remind the audience when you talk about being a beta male and being an alpha male? What what are we talking about here? We, there are males, most men today. Yeah. Male. They think and act like a woman. They are emotional. They are mentally off. They have no logic. And that's a beta male. They go along with homosexuality. Hold on, but hold on. Whoa, whoa, Jesse. Well, we, we got it. That's a lot. LGBTQ. That's a lot. Hold they on. agree with everything that's raw. Abortion. They think and act just like a woman. A beta male does. But so, a non-beta male doesn't because he's a logical thinking. He guides you in the right way to go instead of going along with wrongdoing. So you said that one of the ways in which a beta male is like a woman is that a woman has has mental problems. So you're you're saying that all women and some beta males that they, they have mental problems. Is that what you said? All women who have not grown up close to their fathers have a uh, 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 illogical mindset. Wow. They are up and down in the way they think and feel. And they're controlled by the darkness of their imagination. Likewise, males, males who have not overcome their mothers and returned to their fathers, they have illogical mindsets, just like their mother and just like women. So it's almost like you've you've almost taken a, a bit of a Freudian approach and like perverted it into sort of like your 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 Christian view of that. Is, is that am I sort of onto the, the, the ideology here? Well, I have not perverted it. Even God said that we must be born again. Yeah. You are born of the woman and anyone who is born of the woman is dying. But those who are born of the spirit of God are living. And so I didn't make that up. God mm. did that. You have to call him fraudulent or whatever. Is this some um, is this the type of stuff you talk about in these Christian counseling sessions with young you men? Can- you can hear that on my radio show if you go to jessalinepeterson.com or rebuildingtheman.com. Right. Because I get calls about these issues from around the world. Yeah. And the same thing is happening is that their mothers have turned them away from their fathers by playing victim mm. and pretending that the father was a bad guy. She was just the humble little woman, have nothing to do with it. She's a victim, turning the children away from their fathers, recreating them in her image. And they, she caused the children to become angry. And once you become angry, you become just like the person that you're angry at. That's why in today's America, the men are acting just like the women because the fathers are not protecting them from the mothers. What per, you said, unfortunately, at this point, most men are beta. What percentage of all American men right now? Give me the numbers. What percentage are alpha? What percentage are beta? That's a really good question. I don't know the percentage. I do know that an abnormal amount of men today are beta males, especially millennials and disease and some of the older generation as well. But Mm. most millennial men and disease are beta males because there has been an attack on boys and men for the last 60 to 70 years. And the whole idea is to destroy the image of the male and usher in the image of the woman, which is not good for family, is not good for a country, but it's not good for the for woman. Me. Ballpark and it it's for not me. good for the woman because the women are not created to lead. They are created to follow. Women don't have love. They receive love from the man who received it from God. Um, there is, is God is in it, Christ, Christ in man, yeah. man over woman, and woman over children. That's the order. Is but it, the mothers uh, tend to... Uh, uh, reverse that order and put the woman over the man and that would never work that that that's a that's a little nebulous to me but so would you ballpark it are we talking 10 percent alpha 20 percent alpha what ballpark it i absolutely don't know the amount but i am the number the percentage yeah. but i'm stunned at how many men are like women nowadays i mean yeah. i literally counsel with men and women across the world and on my show, I get tons of calls from men and women around the world. Right. And the same thing is happening. Women are destroying and they're starting in the home and then in the schools and in government and all over the place. That's interesting. I'm trying to imagine what what kind of person would say I'm struggling with something. Let me call Jesse Lee Peterson for help. I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of such an individual. It's hard to imagine. Uh, any person that has examined him or herself yeah. and they know something is wrong 
and they hear me talking about it, they will call me to get a better understanding of how to overcome it. But wow. most people are not seekers. They are just out, out in the world, going along with whatever they hear or see. They have no sense to think for themselves. So you, it, it's just a few because most people are, are taking the wide road that leads to destruction. Mm. For example, you have men who are with women and the women are controlling them. Right. It, it, those are the type of men that are not seeking to overcome and return. In to your the mind, the man should always control the woman, right? He should always be the head of the woman. Absolutely. Wow. Otherwise, wow. it's not going to work. Jesse, listen, you really said it all. Uh, I, I do want to just ask about one more thing. Our audience may or may not know you're you're in your 70s. Are, what are, are you drinking pomegranate? What are you doing in order to keep that glow? I don't have any anger in my heart. I only have love, which come from God. And when you don't have anger, you're not stressed out. You're mm. not worried. You're not having suicidal thought. You're not comparing yourself to others. You're not trying to be like anyone else. You are yourself. You're in a perfect, peaceful place within yourself. So you're not comparing yourself to anyone when you don't have anger. That's why you have to overcome anger if you want perfect peace. What? So it's not like you've switched to turkey bacon or you eat a lot of fruit <laughs> or have a kind of some special special skin. It's just you're just not an angry guy. No, I don't have anger, so I'm not under stress. And you don't attribute any of it to diet. No, I do work out. You know, oh. I exercise. I eat in moderation now, mm -hmm. but I do it because, you know, I have a, a self-control now. I don't have to give it to all that stuff. And plus, I don't have anger, so I'm not trying to fulfill my uh, an ego. Right. Most people who are out of control in the way they eat, have sex, use pot and drink, they have an ego problem. They have an anger problem. That's why we show people how to overcome that anger so they can have peace within themselves. Then they would do all things in moderation. Wow. And are you are you off sex altogether now? I am. You are. Because I'm not ma only because I'm not married. If I was married, I would not be offset. Wow. That's a revelation. I think the audience will find compelling. That's very, very interesting. Um, and you think are that, you that are, you're not married, right? I am not married. Are you off sex or you have having sex out of wedlock? I'm very much on sex. You have having sex out of wedlock? I'm, I don't even know the term. The term wedlock to me is not a term that's part of my life. Wedlock so, sounds locked. It sounds bad. You're not married, right? I'm not married. So you have a sex out of wedlock. I just don't know what wedlock is. That's amazing. You'd never heard that word. Yeah, it's just a weird word. It sounds like a mor moralizing word. It means that anyone who is not married and they have a sex out of wedlock. Yeah, it's not good because the woman who is having sex out of wedlock is a slut. And the man who is having sex out of wedlock is a slut maker. And wow. that's not good for either one. Wow. That's, amazing. That is something. We're gonna Isn't have that to amazing? We're gonna have to go back to the drawing board on that because that Would could be. Would you really... ever marry a slut? You know that we discussed that word on your show. That's it's not a term I use, so it's hard for me to engage with it seriously. Right, but I use it. Oh, any woman that's having sex out of wedlock is a slut. Would you mm. marry a slut? I, I reject the premise. What do you mean? I reject the premise of the question. What do you mean? Come on, Jesse. I don't understand what you mean. Yeah, and you and I don't understand what you mean. So you rejected the fact that a woman who's having a female who's having sex out of wedlock is a slut. I, I reject the entire framing of this issue. What do you mean? Come on. Why are you rejecting the truth? The, your 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 truth is nonsense. But that makes you sound like a beta male. I don't want to use beta male on you today. You've used it on me so many times. I think I could take it once more. <laughs> Do you believe that any man who has sex out of wedlock is a slut maker? No, I don't. Those are not terms I use. Which is most important to you? Values or education? <laughs> I, I don't believe that it's an either or. I don't see those as two sides of the same uh, of the same seesaw, so to speak. So you don't believe there's a difference between more values and education? They're two different things. In what way? Moral values have are a totally different thing than education. You're acting I like it's that one or the other. You know? Which one do you prefer, more values or education? It's just not a choice like that. It's not a more. It it's not a choice. Be. Well, it should be because people who are educated have no values. Oh, okay. All right. 
Well, Jesse, you've really said it all. We've been speaking with Jesse Lee Peterson, um, now the host not only of the Jesse Lee Peterson show, also host of The Fallen State, a Christian counselor. Insurance will reimburse, he told us, although I want to have a call with someone in California to confirm that. Um, Jesse, it's always fascinating speaking with you. It's uh, always amazing being on with you. I got to bring you back onto my show. Yes. And uh, I want all people to understand that they must be born again. They got to overcome mama and return to the father. Right. Even God said that there's a time there will come a time mm. where I will return the children to the father, meaning adult and young children and then fathers to the children. Because of that spiritual order of God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. Nothing else is going to work but that order. And any male that's following a woman, he's going to he's going to suffer. It's never going to work out. Wow. Because anytime you listen to a woman, you will suffer. OK, we're going to get that all evaluated, translated and uh, and notated so that we can do some deeper thinking about it. But, Jesse, I, I really do appreciate your time today. I was uh, I appreciate you having me on, David, and I will send Joel over for more clarity. All right. Okay, Joel, I don't know who that is, but we'll wait for him. <laughs>